What is up guys? I'm Joshua Weisman and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite taco fillings of all time. Carnitas. And I'm going to show you how to make it. So, carnitas translates to little meats, or well, as far as I know, don't quote me on that. So essentially, it's a slow braised pork shoulder or pork butt, which Boston butt actually, and it gets braised in all these delicious aromatics like cinnamon and bay leaf and garlic and lime juice. I mean, no, it's, it's, yeah, in, yeah. Now, hyper-traditionally, I believe it would be simmered in straight fat, like straight lard, but just to make things easier and a little less messy, I started out with water, and then the water gets simmered and evaporated until it's completely gone, and then it's just the fat that's left over, and that does the frying process that we're looking for in the end, once it's nice and tender. You get the point. Now, you're gonna start with about four pounds of boneless pork shoulder, also known as Boston butt. I ended up having to buy two separate pieces because each was about two pounds in size, so, you know, just buy accordingly. Just be mindful that some of these deboned pork shoulders tend to kind of have a split down the middle. Just follow along that, it'll be fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, all you're gonna do is cut your pork shoulder into two inch chunks or cubes. Don't worry about the fat, you wanna leave the fat on there. Don't trim this very much, if at all. Once you're done with that pork shoulder, you're gonna go ahead and slice four to five cloves of garlic. Mm, those knife skills, though. Now, let's take a minute to look at our mise en place. So we've got our spice mix, which is a mixture of one teaspoon ground coriander, one teaspoon ground cumin, one teaspoon of paprika, and a tablespoon of salt. Next is two limes cut in half for juicing our garlic that we sliced earlier, two cinnamon sticks, and three bay leaves. Now, from here, you're gonna place your cut pork in a cold, not on the heat, large Dutch oven. Then you're gonna add our previously mentioned spice mixture. Then you're just gonna toss and massage the pork with the spices until everything is thoroughly coated. Once that's done, you can add your sliced garlic and just toss it to sort of incorporate that. Then you're gonna add the juice of two large limes. Then pour over just enough water to mostly cover the pork. Cover about three quarters of the pork. It took me about two cups of water. Next, add in your three bay leaves and two whole cinnamon sticks. Now this is optional, but it will get things going a lot faster. What I like to do is I'll put it on the stove top and bring it up over medium high heat just until it begins to simmer. Once it starts to simmer, pull it off the heat and put it in the oven with the lid off for three to four hours. Seems like a long time, but you really just gotta let it do its thing. You're basically waiting for the meat to become super tender and fall apart and gain some nice color. Just make sure you go in the oven and turn the pieces over every now and again so that it evenly colors. You'll know it's done once the liquid is completely evaporated and the fat in the bottom is beginning to fry the meat and the meat is nicely colored. I'm gonna sound like Ina Garten saying this. I'm in my own corn tortillas. You are more than welcome to use store-bought. That's totally fine. Now, if you are making the corn tortillas, you're gonna add one and a half cups of water to two cups of masa flour. Just mix that until it forms a dough. Once you have your masa dough, you're gonna separate and shape out about 19 masa balls, which would be about an inch in diameter each. Next, one at a time, you're gonna place a masa ball in the center of a tortilla press that you happen to have for some reason, in between two sheets of plastic wrap, and you're gonna press it down until you get about a five inch in diameter circle. And then I like to stack them on top of each other on the side with sheets of plastic in between each individual tortilla. That way they don't stick to each other. Next, in a hot pan that's preheated over medium-high heat, you're gonna add your corn tortilla and cook each tortilla one minute per side. Now I'm gonna show you a really cool way to slice an onion. So you're gonna cut off both the top and the bottom of a white onion, and then you're gonna slice it in half, cutting through one of the cut ends. Don't cut the other way, cut the way that I'm cutting. Remove the outer skin and then flip it so the cut side is facing down and slice it against the grain as thinly or thick as you like it. Bam, now you have really beautiful half moons instead of really ugly half moons. Now once your pork is done, you could go ahead and pull it out of the oven and start chunking it and whatnot, but what I'm about to show you is gonna take it to a whole nother planet, so you know, maybe consider it. Now this is why it's important that you make sure that all the water is evaporated and only rendered fat is left behind. So basically you're gonna pour it out onto a foil lined baking sheet, rendered fat and all, and you're gonna pull apart your meat into chunks. Don't shred it like you do with pulled pork, you're just trying to make bite sized chunks. Once you're done with that, you're gonna put it back in the oven at 400 degrees for 10 more minutes until it starts to crisp up a little bit. Don't leave it in there too long or it'll dry out. Now let's just take a brief moment to talk about toppings. We've got cilantro, we've got white onions that we sliced, we've got sliced radish, 
some sliced limes for juice, and some nicely crumbled cotija cheese. And now, like we always do, like you know how we do, the unveiling. All right, guys, well, I'm going through the soft opening of a new restaurant in town in like an hour. And I just ate about four tacos. Uh, do I regret it? N no, N no, I, I, I don't. These tacos, sorry, let me rephrase that. These carnitas are mind blowing. All right, you saw. I think the visual representation said enough. The thing I love about this recipe is that it's a great weekend recipe and it's great for crowds. And now, you know, it's totally up to you. Make it, don't make it, you know, live your life. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you next week.